The Arm & Wing is a true cambered airfoil made out of Dollar Tree foam board, hot glue, and packing tape. The Arm & Wing is constructed from one contiguous piece of foam board with an integral control surface in a 5 inch airfoil cord or a 7 inch airfoil cord with optional cord for the control surfaces with two internal formers for the 5 inch and three internal formers for the 7 inch. Typical length is 30 inches and these can easily be joined. For this video I'll give a start to finish condensed version of the construction of the arm and wing with links to the more detailed sections for each of the construction steps. Refer to the additional videos as you need for more detail. All of the terminology in these videos I use regarding the cord is for the cambered airfoil component of the wing only, here to here. Be certain you're using ReadyBoard, which is readily acquired from the Dollar Tree in the United States and Canada. Cover your foam board with colored or clear packing tape. Decide whether you want the 5 inch airfoil wing cord or 7 inch airfoil wing cord. For your wing color scheme, decide whether you want a solid color, top and bottom, or a 7 inch cord, different colors, top and bottom, or a 5 inch cord, different colors, top and bottom. Decide if you're going to use a spar, either a carbon arrow shaft, or a quarter inch, or a 3 16 wooden dowel are recommended, round or square. If building the 5 inch wing cord, Mark your foam board at 5 inches and score the paper here to correspond with the transition of color if you're using two-tone color scheme. If you're making a 7 inch cord wing like this, mark the underside of your foam board at 7 inches at the transition opposite side and score the paper only at this location all the way across the foam board. For both the 5 and 7 inch wings mark in one inch from the edge of the lower surface trailing edge of the wing. This is one inch from here. Using a very sharp cutting implement with a new blade extended only long enough to score the paper as well as using a straight edge, score the paper at the fold mark five or seven inches. Also score the paper at the one inch mark. Remove the paper only from this one inch section and the upper surface section, leaving the inside lower surface. Bevel the trailing edge of your lower wing surface, ideally by clamping a straight edge to the wing with the trailing edge right up against a surface and approximately a quarter inch forward of the transition of the paper to foam. Consider using a drywall sanding sponge and sanding that right down until there's only paper at the very edge. Fold the leading edge of your wing at the paper foam transition. Place the foam side beneath a heavy object like a piece of plywood or particle board with the foam paper transition right at the edge. Fold this up to 90 degrees. Then put it on top of a flat surface and overfold it completely. And finally, place that beneath the heavy surface and carefully and consistently press down the full span Or a nice leading edge. If you're building a 5 inch airfoil cord like this one, for the base formers you'll either need two 1 inch strips of foam board and a carbon arrow shaft or dowel for the spar or a 2 inch wide strip for the base and then for the top former one more 2 inch strip whether it be for the sparless or the spar version of the wing. If you're building the 7 inch airfoil cord wing like this one, for the base former you'll need a 2 inch strip, for the middle former you'll either need two 1 inch strips and your spar or a 2 inch strip, and then for the top former 
you'll need another two inch strip. So three thick for the seven inch wing. For the five inch wing, I recommend starting the first former one inch rear of the actual bend of the wing, which is actually about three quarters of an inch rear of the paper foam transition right there. One fairly easy way to accomplish that is to use your one of your one inch strips and place that in the inside of the leading edge of your wing and use that as a spacer to glue your first actual former in place here. If using a spar, place the spar behind the initially placed former and then glue down your second base former. Then for your top former, the two inch strip, apply the glue right to the leading edge of the bottom former, lined up right here, press down with a piece of wood or metal. Remove the paper from the upper surface of the upper former. Then use a smooth, blunt instrument like the side of a utility knife to squish down on the upper former to make it conform more closely to the spar. And I also recommend pressing down on the leading edge of the upper former and the trailing edge of the upper former to give it a slightly curved configuration so that it will accept the curvature of the upper surface of the wing slightly better when it's glued down. Then glue the trailing edge of the upper and lower formers together and use something to press down. If you're making a matched pair of wings Begin manufacturing your second wing by indexing the second wing to the first wing and the spar in place, at least in order to place the first leading edge former. At that point you can remove the first wing, place the spar, the lower former, and then the upper former gluing down on your second wing. If you're making the larger 7 inch airfoil cord, I recommend beginning the lower former 1 inch rear of the paper foam transition. Then you can put down your first middle layer former, whether you're using a spar and you use a one inch piece or you're not using a spar and you can use a two inch piece. I will be using a spar, so I'll put the one inch piece there, press down, place the spar, move the second. There will be some overlapping and steps, if you will, in the formers, but I've just recommended making them one and two inches respectively just for simplicity. And then the final two inch former goes on top, applying the glue to the leading edge of the former below it. Remove the paper from the upper former and use the smooth blunt instrument to squeeze down the upper former. Apply the final bead of glue to the trailing surface of the upper and middle formers there. If you're making a matched pair of 7 inch airfoil cord wings, just be certain to put your base former down first and glue that down and then index the spar of your first wing that you made to the second former you place in your second wing. Glue that down, glue that down, and then finish your second wing. Perform the gluing of the upper surface of the wing 
to the upper former here with a bead of glue along the center. Flip the wing over and glue the trailing edge of the lower surface to the upper surface, taking care to avoid too much excess glue squeezing out from that joint. And press that down precisely. Cut your control surface to the desired width. I recommend one and a half inches for the five inch airfoil cord and two inches for the seven inch cord. After that's cut precisely, you can bevel down the trailing edge so it's nice and thin. In preparation for taping later, it's useful to use hand clamps and a straight edge against the edge of a piece of wood and a sanding sponge such as this back and forth like that until the foam is taken right down to the paper. Next create the control surface hinge here where the tape ends and the foam begins at the trailing edge. And this is pretty easily done by using a nice straight edge like this, placing it right up against that transition there, using a squeeze hand clamp like this at the other end of your work surface, and using a nice new blade extended just enough to cut about halfway through the foam here. Be very careful not to cut all the way through. Then retract the straight edge about half an inch, reclamp it in place, extend your blade if you need to, and then meet that previous cut at a 45 degree angle, so incline the knife this way, still being careful not to cut all the way through, and follow your straight edge all the way down so that you'll be able to remove a small strip of the foam board from inside the hinge and then that will permit you to create the hinge. Once you've created the hinge take a finger or some blunt smooth object and press down the upper surface of the tape one last time to get it nicely adhered to the paper underneath and then fold back your control surface so that you can use a sanding block or sponge just to finish up the inside of that hinge so that it's nice and consistent all the way down. It's also advantageous to expose a little bit of the paper inside the hinge so that when you finish this with tape the tape will have something to adhere to up in that hinge and will tend to keep the tape up in the hinge whenever the control surface articulates. Create your hinge and trailing edge with more packing tape. Ensure that this foam is very clean, particularly down in the hinge notch, using a brush and or some compressed air or canned air like this. If you're doing the kissing tape technique for your trailing edge, I recommend first taping the underside of the hinge, then the top of the trailing edge, and finish it with the lower trailing edge. I recommend applying the packing tape directly centered over the hinge itself, and then use a smooth implement to smooth down the leading edge of the tape. Then fold back your control surface like this, and then work the tape down into the hinge with your finger until it contacts the actual undersurface of the control surface itself. And then unfold, use your implement to smooth down the trailing edge of the hinge piece of tape. Apply the upper surface trailing edge tape it's useful to use a card to push down the tape consistently. The final application of tape on the lower surface of the trailing edge should extend from just rearward of the hinge to ideally about a quarter inch beyond the trailing edge of your tape here so that this will end up overlapping this piece of tape. 
once securely taped to one another here you can use a clean straight edge applied about an eighth to a quarter inch behind the actual foam board trailing edge and a nice sharp blade to cut the tape of your trailing edge and you'll be left with a nice clean sharp trailing edge. At that point you'll be left with your finished arm and wing section with a one piece lower upper surface integral trailing edge and control surface with a nice integral hinge taped lower and upper surfaces ready to make a plane with.